How's my butt look? Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. I hope you're ready to learn something because today we're going to talk about how to choose the right leader. We're going to talk about different kinds of leaders and when you should use them. Before we dive in, one thing I want you to understand is that you shouldn't get hung up on the numbers, like length and pound test and that kind of thing. Think more about how the leader is going to work with all of the other parts, the rod, the line, the fly, and you. You're an important part of this equation. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video. And I've disabled fast forward, so don't even try. Let's go over a few leader basics. Leaders are usually tapered. They're thicker up by the fly line and thinner down at the end where you tie the fly. That's because physics. A longer, thinner leader will get you a better fly presentation, but a shorter, thicker leader will generally be easier to cast. Most leaders come in either fluorocarbon or nylon monofilament. Mono is cheaper, fluoro is more invisible to the fish. Is more invisible right or do I just say less visible? I like more invisible. Keep in mind that fluorocarbon sinks, which might not be what you want for dry flies, unless you do want that. There are some leaders that are sinking leaders. They attach to the end of your fly line just like any other leader. They're more convenient to carry instead of a spare line or spool, but a dedicated sink tip line will accomplish the same purpose and be much easier to cast. It's not hingy. Quiet hummingbird? I'm getting dive bombed by hummingbirds. You can buy pre-made leaders or you can tie your own. You guys know my buddy Ron in Louisiana, right? Right? He makes his own redfish leaders. I paid him a thousand dollars to tell me his formula. So here it is. Butt section, four and a half feet of 50 pound, then just over two feet of 30 pound, then just over a foot of 20, then a 16 to 20 inch tippet of 15 pound. That's proprietary information. There you go. That's a good all around redfish leader and you can use it for other stuff too. If you're wondering about how to match your leader size to your hook size, check out this video right here. It's made by me, so you know it's good. All right, let's get into some of the details about leader choice. Start with salt water. A nine to 12 foot leader tapered down to 15 pound test will get a lot of things done. Striped bass, albies, redfish, bonefish, permit, even tarpon. A regular old 15 pound leader will do just fine for a lot of that. Remember that leader that Ron ties? Now, if you're going for like really big fish because maybe you have something to prove, you might have to fancy it up a bit. You might want to use something like a bimini twist. That sounds like a cocktail, but it's really a knot that strengthens your leader. You may want to add what's called a bite tippet or shock tippet. That's a short, thick section of tippet that you add to the end of your leader and tie your fly onto. It's to protect your tippet from abrasion or from being cut by the fish's teeth or even to protect your tippet from oysters and mangroves that you might be fishing around. So to make that clear, your leader goes from thick to thin and then back to thick again right at the fly. All right, we're done with salt life. Let's go to freshwater now. Again, a nine to 12 foot, 15 pound leader will get a lot of stuff done. Bass, carp, trout, salmon, catfish, alligators, snapping turtles, whatever you're into. If you're going for little bluegills, maybe you want to size things down a little. If you're going for musky, maybe bump it up a little bit. Here's a question for you. Is musky spelled with a Y or an IE? I believe it's open to debate. Leave a comment and let me know how to spell it. And speaking of musky and other bitey things, a shock tippet has its place in freshwater too, like for musky. Some people like to use wire instead of mono or fluoro. That's a can of worms I'm not going to open right now. Okay, Okay, let's talk more about trout leaders since trout are so freaking cool. I'm skipping Euro leaders. If you want to know more about those, watch this video right here by James from About Trout. It's pretty much the world's foremost authority on anything European, especially the pants. I'm also not going to talk about furled leaders, mostly because I'm sick of people calling them feral leaders or feral leaders. It's furl. Also, I think they're silly. Anyway, trout leaders. Nine feet is kind of the standard length. A shorter leader, like seven feet, is good for small streams, shallow nymphing. A longer leader, like 12 or 15 feet, is good for spooky snobby fish where a good presentation matters more. What about streamers? You guys like to huck the meat, right? Main thing to think about is that it's usually a good idea to fish your streamers deep. If you have a floating line, the best way to do that is with a long, thin leader, like seven to nine feet of, let's say, zero X. 
If you have a big fly, anything longer than that will not be pleasant to cast. If you're streamer fishing with a sinking or sink tip line, go with two feet of 20 or 25 pound for your leader. That's it, short and thick. I like to have that heavy line so I can get my flies back from rocks and trees when we're floating in a boat and there's no way to stop when we get hung up. So at the beginning of the video, I said we'd talk more about how your leader works with all the other parts of your rig. What I'm getting at is that you should make adjustments as needed. Just because I can cast this 18 foot leader doesn't mean that you can. I totally can, by the way. If you're struggling to cast a particular leader, change it to make it easier for you. Yes, my super long leader might fish better, but it doesn't mean squat if I can't get the fly where it needs to be in the first place. So change it up, play around with it, figure out what works well for you in whatever situation you're fishing. It's like philosophical and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna have another beer and get back to fishing. Ooh, I think I got some on the lens there. Thanks for watching another huge fly fisherman video. I'll be back next Monday with another new video. Go ahead and set the hook on that like and subscribe button. <laughs> I'll think of some more terrible jokes for you. Maybe hit the bell. That one's for you, Rick. Go over to hugeflyfisherman.com and spend some money and help support the channel. Go be a leader and stay huge. Thanks for playing. All right, let's go catch fish now.